The murky world of Sydney crime is the subject of a new exhibition at the Justice and Police Museum. It looks back at King's Cross in the days before neon signs and sex shops. And as Peter Harvey explains, back then it wasn't the men who ran the streets. One square mile of vice and violence. But it wasn't always like that. In the beginning, it was high class and genteel. Luxurious mansions around the harbour foreshore. Homes for Sydney's rich and powerful. Times quickly changed. Slums began crawling up the hills. By the early years of last century, King's Cross was Sydney's underbelly. And behind its glossy neon face, still is. Those who own the cross control the game that's acted out in underbelly. But let's go back a few years. A bit further to the 1920s and 1930s when the razor gangs tormented the streets and controlled all aspects of illegal business. Pistols were suddenly outlawed so the gangs switched to the long, lethal, cutthroat razors. Vicious and feared, they were to do far more damage than the guns. While King's Cross is definitely a man's world now, back then it was monopolised by two very powerful women. Tilly Devine ran a vice empire, street walkers and brothels. Kate Lee was queen of the illegal booze industry and the cocaine trade. Tilly and Kate surrounded themselves with ferocious henchmen, you know, some, some very, very bad customers of the day. A government crackdown on vice backfired big time. The law said no man could run a brothel. Tilly Devine took note of that and thought, well, I'm not a man. Um, you can't stop me, and that's what she did. And she became a, um, a criminal entrepreneur running brothels that left her one of Sydney's wealthiest women. Cocaine was freely available. Until the early 1920s, you could go into a chemist shop and buy cocaine as a nerve suitor. Then it was banned and of course it went underground. By the late 20s, Kate and Tilly were locked in a take-no-prisoners battle for control of the underworld. One of the most violent battles was on Kellett Street. Then, and now, the heart of King's Cross. August 9, 1929. 40 or 50 gangsters, aligned to either Kate or Tilly, um, attacked each other. What, with guns and knives? Guns, knives, bricks, razors. Um, and all of it played out here in, in Kellett Street? Just around the corner there. Really? Yeah. After their battles, the crooks like to celebrate or lick their wounds here. Today, the Tradesman's Arms is the, um, the East Village Hotel in Palmer Street, and it's a very different place today than it was then. It certainly is, and today it sits on the same old corner, an unassuming pub in an unassuming location. But back then... Most of the gangsters went there, had too much to drink, and therefore that's a recipe for, for violence. There were fights. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And we'll have more from this real underbelly tomorrow. Peter Harvey, Nine News. Last night, Peter Harvey brought you the compelling tale of how King's Cross became synonymous with Sydney's criminal underworld. But that was only half the story. The 50s and 60s in the cross. Times change, crimes change, but not all that much. The very public street warfare of the past has gone underground. The old razor gangs ousted by a smarter, more modern style of criminal. Some of the most notorious and dangerous names in Sydney's criminal history began to emerge. Abe Saffron, known as Mr. Sin. George Freeman, a colourful racing identity. And Mr. Big himself, Lenny McPherson. Abe Saffron muscled his way into the booming nightclub business, in the process taking over Tilly Devine's and Kate Lee's old vice and grog trade. Lenny McPherson, George Freeman and another hard case, Stan the Man Smith, all emerged in the 60s. They weren't interested in taking over from Saffron, but quickly realised there was money to be made working for him. What we're asking for is protection money and we're asking for reduced violence so we can increase our profits. It was the three, McPherson, Freeman and Stan Smith, uh, who ran organised crime. Fueling this rise of organised crime, corrupt cops, backhand payments to the police, kept the crooks in control of the cross and kept the crooks out of prison. Freeman and McPherson also had a number of politicians on side over the time. By the time the 70s rolled around, the four men really had a hold on King's Cross. And then came R&R, &R, 
tens of thousands of US servicemen on leave from the war in Vietnam. The demand for drugs skyrocketed. They came here looking for more drugs and heaps of sex and lots of booze. And King's Cross was the place and Saffron was the man who turned all of that on. How things grew, was, it's quite an amazing story, but it also shows the influence people had and the interest people had in keeping things calm, keeping things under control in that time, business as usual. These men were so influential, their legacy is still with us. There is no doubt in my mind that you still have substantial um, protection rackets being run corruptly by a number of well-known criminals in King's Cross. Sex and drugs and gambling, standover merchants, con men and prostitutes, They'll be around as long as there's money to be made, and there's an awful lot of money to be made up here in the cross. As I said, and as Underbelly so dramatically portrays, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Peter Hunt, Nine News.